I have no clue. I trust Dakota. I don't think that our group can trust her just yet. I think Dakota is a solid ally of our group. As far as Dakota, I believe she is actually good. I think Dakota is is on Alicia and Strand's side. Look, I think she seems pretty trustworthy. I think she will be loyal to our group. My first impression of Dakota is similar to Lydia. I'm not quite sure if this is kind of like a Lydia situation. Dakota is definitely an ally. I feel like signs are pointing us towards um, being able to trust her. And we're gonna come to learn that she can't be trusted like we think we can right now. She's just buying time for them to kind of regroup. I think she feels bad for them and she doesn't really like her sister at all. She just wants out from under the grass for her sister. And I definitely think that Dakota wants to get as far away from her sister as possible. She has to ally with Morgan soon, so. Ginny has no reason to put her into our group. She's playing like a spy for Virginia. I don't think she wants to live with her. I don't think she wants anything to do with her. I think she's scared of her, honestly. Virginia's like evil. And not be evil like Virginia. Who knows? This is the TWD universe. They do what they want with our hearts and our feelings. <gasps> I definitely at first thought Daniel was actually suffering from memory loss. Daniel was really telling the truth and had lost his memory. But a couple minutes later, I sort of realized that this is Daniel Salazar. Um, do I think Daniel was faking it? Yes, absolutely. I reckon he is faking it. I think Daniel was faking. I knew he was faking all along. Daniel was absolutely faking the entire way. I believe he was faking it, although in the beginning it was kind of weird. I mean, he did have a heck of a knot on his forehead. Um, there was no way that uh, something so simple as a head injury was going to take out his memory. When Charlie sat down and started playing the mandolin, um, did that trigger his memory? Uh, by the end of the episode, he confirms that for us when he recognizes Morgan. You could tell he was faking because he knew Morgan instantly. It was like immediately he knew who Morgan was. I think a part of him still doesn't trust Strand. Mm. Daniel's just being Daniel. He, he's reverting back to his badass self from season one. He faking amnesia so that he could gather intel from Virginia. He is the master at getting out of situations. So I, I know he has some sort of grand plan. He has a plan to kill uh, Virginia somehow. Because he's a smart guy and he's one step ahead of everyone else. But the memory loss thing is very smart. He's playing Chloe, he's playing his cards right. And you have to around people like Virginia. It came from Strand. When Daniel turned to Morgan. Daniel said to Morgan, I've never seen that man flinch. And I shot him in the face! <laughs> I thought that was you she was looking for. You look like you could use a haircut. That'd be one of the best lights of the whole episode. Strand. Ah, oh, stab that guy, and today you get to be a hero. You make me remember the person that I am, and to do all the things I need to do now, for you, for me, for all of us, I have to forget that person, and I can't do that with you by my side. This is how we survive. Strand told Alicia that he gave the starter to Jenny for the SWAT truck, uh, in order to secure a spot for the two of them together. It's a St. Christopher's medallion. I found it on one of the dead. My wife used to wear one of these. It helps people to bear heavy burdens. You take it. You need it more than I do. When Daniel um, is on the wagon and he says, oh, I left my special scissors, that just made me laugh like. <laughs> when Charlie said to Dakota, it's okay, we believe you. The way she delivered the line just cracked me up. I know this was not a question, but it has to be said. Morgan is a better cowboy than Rick. What?